sing. Let the sound of praise ring out. Come and hear what the Lord has done. The Lord who has made everything. Sisters and brothers, God not only asks us to repent, but also assures and forgives. Therefore, let us confess our sins to the one who is steadfast love. Loving God, we do not always keep your commandments. We fail to love you. Our conscience is not clear. Wash us in the water of life that we may live again through the grace and mercy of Jesus, our resurrected Savior. Amen. Sisters and brothers, God forgives, restores, and strengthens us through the risen Christ. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Amen. again that with the dead has been love is come again like wheat arising green in the grave they laid him love by hatred slain thinking that he would never wake again laid in the earth like grain sleeps unseen. Love is come again like wheat arising green. When our hearts are wintry, grieving or in pain, your touch can call us back to life again. Fields of our hearts that dead and bare have been. Love is come again to the rising green. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Loving God, in whom we live and move and have our being, help us to choose life in you that we may keep the commands of Jesus, follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit, and witness to the hope that is in us, sharing Christ's love in the world. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Acts. In Athens, Paul faces the challenge of proclaiming the gospel to Greeks who know nothing of either Jewish or Christian tradition. He proclaims that the unknown God whom they worship is the true Lord of heaven and earth, who will judge the world with justice through Jesus, whom God has raised from the dead. We read from Acts chapter 17, verses 22 through 31. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made of human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, 
an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our second reading is from 1 Peter. The author of 1 Peter encourages Christians to remain faithful even in the face of defamation and persecution. In baptism, we are made clean to act in accordance with what is right. We read from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 through 22. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it all with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ always suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sin is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay there in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the word of the Lord. After we were married, my husband and I, decided to wait a couple years before we took our honeymoon. It was our dream to drive out west in our cargo van slash camper. We were very young, so we just simply threw an old mattress in the back of the van with our sleeping bags and some clothes and our new ice chest filled with sandwich stuff and drinks and fruit and off we went. We stopped in, in different places to visit relatives along our way as we headed toward California where he had sisters and a grandmother living. 
One of our favorite things to do is stopping at places, little local tourist spots for an ice cream or to have our picture taken with the statue of the local hero uh, out sitting on a bench outside the pharmacy or posing with taxidermied animals. What a great time we had. We reached California, or Colorado, I'm sorry, and as we were coming through the mountains, we stopped at a little rest side to have lunch. As we were sitting there, we spotted a sign that said, this way to the Hanging Lake. We had no deadline that day, so we locked up the van and grabbed a couple water bottles and we headed toward this hanging lake. The sign made it sound like it would probably be just a short jog. Well, about three hours later, we finally found the hanging lake. <laughs> and I have to say it was probably one of the more challenging hikes I'd ever taken as we kind of wound around and around a small canyon. What a beautiful place this was. It um, became one of our more remembered side trips of the whole vacation. The water in the little lake was an aquamarine color that I had never seen before and cold as ice. I would definitely describe that as a mountaintop experience. But then it came time to go back down again. We were still very excited about our experience, but our legs were a bit tired from the climb. And we never thought as we went up that we would also have to come back down. And this was something no one had warned us about. Going down, you use muscles that you don't use very often. Plus, gravity is pulling at you, and your already tired legs cause you to be a little bit out of balance and rather wobbly. Well, we always prepare to move up in our lives. Not so much to go down. We hear about upward mobility. We hear about breaking the glass ceiling. But do we ever think about going down after we work our way up? We are all overachievers, I think. In our homes, in our careers, in our community service, in our expectations of our children, we only prepare to go uphill. And yet, we hear that small, still voice today saying, the greatest among you will be your servant. The way down is, is so unnatural. The disciples resist it. As Jesus arises, they're left standing there looking up, along with so many of us who, who seek the risen Lord. But even as he rises, Jesus is teaching them how to go back down again. He says, and see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And then miracle on miracle, he opens their minds to the scriptures so that they can understand finally everything that he taught them and what might give them trouble. The Holy Spirit gives them the words that they need. How many times do we come down from a mountaintop experience and want everybody to appreciate the things we saw and we did? And it's never quite the same because all too often, they just don't get it. We might even ask ourselves, what was the point of this whole thing, this great experience, if no one else gets it? 
Why can't we just stay up there on that mountain? What, what's the point? It's just so unnatural. I mean, our muscles ache from the trip down. But isn't this so often the case with the paths that lead to the heart of God? Jesus sends us down because that is where the Holy Spirit waits. The Holy Spirit gives us what we need and then scatters those seeds everywhere that we have spread and, and plants them among the people. And in this way, the word of God spreads and grows. As Jesus arose, the disciples worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. To be continued next week. Be prepared for your walk downhill. Amen. Jesus Christ. Embolden your church as your followers to reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Revitalize the health of oceans, rivers, lakes, springs, glaciers, and other bodies of water that give life to your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to the oppressed and speak truth to power through your prophets. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You come near to us when we are lost and you hear our distress. We pray for those who suffer in any way. 
Today we pray for Jerry Lenz, Larry Mook, Randy Schilt, Sharon Anderson, Shelley Wenthe, Dennis Wenthe, Brian Crutch, Mary Albrecht, Marcus Brzee, Shirley Devlin, Dory Stednicka, Evelyn Johnsrud, Jim Peterson, George Rubish, Annette Johnson, Terry Needham, Hannah Rosemeyer, Macy Needham, Joey Lewis, Sue, Peggy Rubish, Dan and Carmen Phelps, Linda Connolly, Dennis and Trudy Frymiller, Robin Brandt, and Dave. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your commands are good and merciful. Give us courage to take hold of our baptismal promises, to work for ju justice, advocate for the voiceless, and free the oppressed and imprisoned in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You remain with us always, O God, and your kingdom has no end. We remember the saints who have gone before us. Unite us forever in your final victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. With gold, bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we pla place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> of me. Again after supper he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet. Behold the risen Christ. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word, and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened to us your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia.